Good morning. It's been a while since we've chatted and I've been asked to talk to you a bit more about the creepy crawlies that are in the jungle because a couple of weeks ago I helped facilitate a seminar um, down here in a hotel in the tour at the Tortuga Reserve, the, the Turtle Reserve, which is a biological exploration um, and turtle hatching site here in Ojo Chal. And so because of that, I've been wait procrastinating because it's been a little busy. It's been high season. Um, but here's, you know, some information that I learned that was new to me and that I think is really valuable to share with you guys, you know, the new people coming into the jungle and people who are just not sure what they should do when they're around and these creepy crawlies come into our space, right? We're okay with them being out there in the jungle, but when they come into our close space, then we, we tend to have fear, especially people who, like me, who grew up with, like, no snakes in central Alberta, you know, rural central Alberta. So, here we go. One of the first things I got out of this seminar was don't create a home for the bugs, for the food that is the for the snakes or the scorpions or whatever you don't want to have around. So they feed on little bugs of all sorts and kinds, right? So in your storage areas or places where you don't clean regularly, where you've got boxes and trashes and things like that piled, clean those regularly. You know, at least once a year, if not two to three times a year, move those boxes, give it a good sweeping, um, vacuum, whatever you do, because those are the spaces where, the, where they go and then where those bugs are. They're going to attract the bigger critters, which attract the bigger critters, which attract the bigger critters. And eventually part of that becomes the snakes and the scorpions and the things that we really don't want, the spiders. The things that we really don't want in our close proximity and in our homes, right? So the biggest message that I can give to you to prevent the occurrences and the close encounters of the creepy kind is keep things clean and tidy. In your yard, don't leave piles of debris really close to your yard. Don't have piles of old boards and tin. And if you do have them and you have to go work with them and make sure you wear gloves and make sure you wear boots and move everything really carefully um, because that's where you can potentially have one of those creepy crawlies residing, okay? Terciopelas particularly, they really don't mind sharing their space with us, which is one of the things that makes them a little bit disconcerting. We are not their food source. They don't come out to hunt us, they don't want to bite us, but they will live close to us probably because there's a food source there, which would be mice, rats, lizards, those kinds of things, okay? So by keeping the food sources away, keeping things clean and cleared, having your gardeners, or if you're your own gardener, whatever that is, keeping the grass cut further around, the jungle cut down, further around your space, really, really, really helps because when the grass is short, then the birds of prey can see those critters and they know that and they don't want to be food for them. So they will stay away from where there's short grass. So those are the two best things you can do to ensure that you don't have an encounterance of the creepy crawly kind, okay? So prevention, 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 as we always talk about. Um, those are the biggest things. If you do have a creepy crawly come into your place, a large spider, and some of those large spiders are pretty venomous, um, or even a snake, understand there's only really in our area three venomous snakes. Coral snake, which you very rarely see, um, the odd pit viper, which you very rarely ever see, and the terciopelas. So really the most common venomous snake that we're going to see is the terciopella. They kind of look like a rattlesnake in my mind, then that's just my warped thing. Um, but anyway, if you do, the biggest thing is to remain calm again. Stay, stay, stay calm because the minute you get upset as any animal, they can sense your, your anxiety and then they become anxious and then they become afraid and then they'll start doing and the, then the potential for striking. The reason that most people get bit by a snake is because it's a Tico and he's a worker working in the jungle and he goes in with his machete to chop at it, to kill it, especially if it's a terciopella. And they get too close. They get in that strike range and then they get bit. So if there's a situation where the snake is in your circle and you are nervous about it, um, be calm. Go get your pool skimmer. Pop it over top. There you go. You've got the snake in the pool skimmer. Now you can relocate it and you are far enough away from that snake that because your pool skimmer handle extends 
and you can now take him to the jungle. You can put him in a garbage can, put the lid on, or any kind of a pail and put the lid on, and, and dispose of the snake back out where his habitat is, remove him to a new habitat, whatever it is you need to do. Okay, those are the things. Don't get in close. A young snake can jump, uh, I can't remember, it's like two or three times its body length from, from coiled position. They can't jump from, they can't move from being flat, but when they're in coil, they can move. So that's the reason most peop people get get bit. Most people that have been reported in this area in the hospital tend to be workers who've been, who've been doing that. The other reason that people and animals get, get bit, get struck by a snake, is just surprising them and they're defending themselves. They don't want to shoot their wad of venom at us. It takes them a lot to rebuild that venom, a lot of energy. They don't want to strike at us, and the only reason they will is if they're very afraid. For example, I have a good friend whose four dogs went running down their driveway, and there happened to be a very large Trusiopello going across the road, and he was scared out of his skin. And so he struck the dogs because he was protecting himself. It was just one of those things that can happen. It's the first time, uh, the second time in the 10 plus years I've been hanging out in the jungle here, almost 15 years, I've been hanging out in the jungle here. That's only the second time, maybe the third time I've heard of dogs getting struck. Um, you know, it can happen, but the good thing is we have veterinarians who have all of the um, anti-venom stuff here. We have hospital from where I live, it's it, if I'm in a hurry, it's like 12 minutes away, 15 minutes away, and they all carry the antivenom. You've got lots of time to get there. Don't be cutting it and sucking it because if you act, if you have a cut or a sore in your mouth, that venom's going to enter in through your mouth, and you're going to get more of it. So just keep the most important thing if you do get struck is to keep your blood pressure and your heart rate down. Be very calm. Try to get somebody to drive you to the hospital. If you have to drive yourself, at least phone somebody and meet them because you need to keep yourself as calm and as slow moving as you can to stop that venom from moving quickly through your system. The venom is designed to break, it's their digestive system, so it's designed to break down tissue. So where that strike point is, it's going to begin to break down tissue and that's the thing you're going to be dealing with as well and that's why it leaves scars down the road. The biggest thing, you guys, with snakes and spiders and stuff is mo unless they are in your home and you feel you and you have to get them out, leave them alone. Don't touch them. Let them go on their way. If you have to relocate them, use your pool skimmer or something equally long and large um, so that you can remove them. You know, it's just common sense and understanding that we are not who they want to eat. They don't hunt us. They only strike out of their defense. And if we understand that they're only doing it out of their fear, we have a whole different respect for who and what they really are, you know? So it's like, kind of calm down, chill out. If they're there, go, hey, cool, I got a snake. Kind of go, wow, this is really cool. Because, you know, and stay calm, stay calm, stay calm, stay calm. Take pictures of it, you know, whatever, and then put it in your pool skimmer thing or something, you know, like that's got a really long handle on it and uh, remove it, relocate it. So those were the most important things that I learned. I'm just checking my notes, sort of. Um, oh, I wanted to tell you guys, one of the greatest things they told us at that seminar was um, a lot of us have trouble with bats being really close to our house and, and in the back poo and pee on the walls and it gets a little messy. We love having the bats around because they're great bug eaters. I am allergic to their, their guano and their pee, so it makes me have trouble breathing. And they told me that, you know, the child's whirly gig thing that you blow on, it's got the wheels, the pinwheel things. Hanging those, apparently, makes one of the best things to deter bats from coming into your space. I have to get some. I'm going to Canada in May. I'm going to be getting some of the dollar store, you know, bringing them back and hanging them because they like to go in my pool house and they like to go around by my bedroom and I just can't have it around. I can't breathe their, their, their stuff. So that's the other great thing that I learned out of that seminar. I hope you've enjoyed. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about, and I will research it. I will do my best. And please understand that everything that I'm telling you is really my experience and the things that I've learned. And I've uh, been living here a little while, so I've learned a bunch, you know. All right, guys. Have a great day. Rita Lucas from Gringo to Tico. You take care. Pura Vida.